as well as other flexible materials that you probably have heard that um, Nokia has released their uh, prints for their phones. Uh, MakerBot has been working on, um, uh, you know, on 3D printed cases. There are a lot of designs that are being posted on um, Thingiverse right now. So we're hoping to, you know, to develop um, a flexible type filament that can be used uh, for those types of applications. Um, there's some fun things we have here that's um, just a beautiful piece of art, I think, that's still in development. It has, um, it's technically ABS, but it has this, you know, great glow to it, so we think it would be, you know, great to, to be used by artists. Uh, again, it's still under development, there's some kinks to work out of that material. So, but that's, you know, that's the type of ABS right here. Um, I think that's about it, about the presentation. If you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Is this clear uh, for me? Okay, so what you have here, you have uh, one rail of hips. And it's very natural looking. There's a part that's made out of hips. Uh, and most, the rest of them are ABS. Um, they're in different colors and the one you pointed to was natural. So it has no color concentrate uh, added okay. to it, so it is it's a natural form. Uh, PLA, like Doug mentioned, um, in its natural form is translucent. It's not completely transparent, but it is translucent. So the thinner the part, you know, you can see through it as you build a bigger, thicker part, you know, you lose that translucency. And of course, a lot of PLA filaments have color added to them, so they lose that translucency, but in its natural form, PLA is actually, you know, very pretty. We, I should have brought some parts made of PLA um, that they have, you know, very pretty glow to them because of that, um, you know, the edges as you build layers of filament, you have that sparkle that these parts have. I guess, do you guys sell them directly to... Uh, right, like Village Plastics is a manufacturer. They, they, you know, they're a B2B type company. They, they manufacture and they, um, you know, deal with, you know, wholesalers. They deal with, um, with fabricators when it comes to the welding rod. Uh, Filico is a B2C company. It's a business to consumer. So we, are, we have e-commerce site that sells directly to people, hobbyists, and anyone else who needs you know, 3D printing filament. There's a big expo next month in New York, a big 3D printing expo mm -hmm. in April, 22nd, 23rd. Okay. I don't know if it's first annual, but in New York it is. But, uh, they have a website? Yeah, it's up. It's on the website. Okay. It's Media Bistro uh, that's putting that up. Um, again, uh, Village Plastics is a sponsor uh, at that uh, expo, mm -hmm. and um, but 3D systems going to be there. There's been a lot of presentations, a lot of like you know the future of where it's going. They're going to be discussing uh, things that yeah. There will be conferences for two days, um, you know, on different technologies. Um, again, future. So we're we're hoping to go and learn something. Yeah. All right, I guess you want to stick around and ask any more questions or check out the printer. Um, I guess we're going to finish up here can officially ask, then. Can I ask a question? Does anyone here own a 3D printer besides Doug? Does it have to work? <laughs> In the future. <laughs> You're not a hackerspace unless you have three broken printers. <laughs> We're there. Yeah, so. Ma uh, Makers Alliance yes. has, has three broken ones. Thanks, everybody, for coming. It's been excellent.